Right. Good morning, everyone. Um, so it's up to me to keep you awake after your sugar crush and your snack is going to hit you. Um, let's go. It's a pleasure to be here, uh, especially in this format, uh, not in the virtual uh, conference setting. So um, I have to get used to that again, seeing people in front of me. Uh, my name is Mario. I originally hail from Belgium, but I've been living and working in Asia all of this century. Um, I am a, an old school trained graphic designer. That is, I graduated before these things ruled the world. Computers was not a thing. I had to do the job by hand. So I'm one of those industries that got transformed, that underwent a complete digital transformation and a digital disruption. Uh, fast forward to today, I work with uh, Deloitte. Deloitte is a consulting firm. We have a department that looks at digital specifically at transformations, at digital disruptions. So this is my daily thing. Day in, day out, I manage this for our clients and our clients sit in various different categories. They can go from finance to government agencies, to healthcare, to luxury, to FMCG, to transportation, all dealing with that same challenge, get me through or make me survive disruption. So I think um, it serves a purpose to really align and get a shared understanding of what we mean with a digital disruption. And I've captured it here. It's a digital disruption will occur when a technological innovation destabilizes a business environment and erodes a status quo a radical change in what you thought was business as usual. Uh, we all carry one in our pocket. Uh, Damien brought our attention to it earlier. A phone, a smartphone is one of those perfect examples of where a technological innovation disrupted countless industries and set different quotes, different status quotes uh, that we are now disrupting in turn ourselves. Uh, a phone made a digital camera pretty much obsolete. A phone disrupted postal services. Um, we have these things with us because we can communicate with it all the time. It changed our human behavior. Everything changed because of this technological innovation. And what that then creates for a business is even more disruption. Because digital disruption does not happen in a silo or a vacuum. Disruption in any of these factors, be it digital, economic, societal, or regulatory, further disrupts things. Let me give you another example. Who here drove to the venue? Few hands. Who here took um, a ride share to the venue? Couple more hands. Car ownership, private car ownership, is one of those examples of an economic factor that is being disrupted. Uh, studies shown that if you own a private car, you use it for 5% of the time that you own that car, 5%. All that money that you put into the car is to use it, on average, 5% of the time. It's not a lot. You pay a lot of money for that. So where the dis uh, disruption comes economically is that people use digital um, capabilities to offer you ride share services. So now if you own a car and you enter that program to offer your car up for services for, for uh, passengers, your use of the car quadruples, becomes 20%. On top of that, it gives you money, you make an income of it. Completely change the economic model there. Um, and then continuing, societal and regulatory, uh, not that I'm gonna unpack it yeah, even deeper, but just think on the abilities of, of, of a car to drive itself now, autonomous vehicles. Our acceptance of that 
um, our, our, our change that we need to do in our mindsets around car ownership, all societal, regulatory, the insurance policies that come with that. Do you still need to learn how to drive if a car can drive itself? How does that impact transportation? How does that impact public transportation? All that is self-perpetuating disruption. So don't see disruption as just a digital or technical factor. A proper disruption disrupts everything here. And what does that give as an outcome? Now that everything is being disrupted, there's a couple of numbers here I'd like to share with you. 86, 92, 73. Now they mean something. 86% of customers are willing to pay more for products and services that give them a good customer experience, that enables them joy in their transaction. 92%. 92, pretty much everybody, gives um, a brand two opportunities to give them a good experience or they're gone. It's not strike three, it's strike two. Reflect on that yourself. How many of us have abandoned a brand we have previously loved because the way we are dealing with them, the way we are interacting with them is just not good enough? I know I have, and it's because of that last stat. Three out of four of us remember a great experience with a brand, so much so that you raise, you automatically raise the standard for everyone else. I could do it this way there, which was a lot more easier, a lot more fun. Why can I not do that here? What's with this company? Why don't they get it? The cold, harsh reality for brands is that you need your customer more than they need you. You, the company, need your customer more than the customer needs you. Whether you're an iconic brand or a government agency, same reality. When you offer our inability to rapidly, adaptively, give great experiences to your customer, you build a connection with them. That connection will anchor a loyalty with them. And that loyalty will give you the business results that you uh, first envision when you set out on transforming your business. As our previous speaker correctly pointed out, this is a business. If you transform, it needs to be for the benefit of the business. Sure, but here's what matters. For the benefit of the business means that the experiences you deliver to anyone who interacts with touch points of your company, including your own employees, it makes or breaks a business. And experiences happen either by circumstance or by design. And you want it to be by design. You want to have a certain amount of control over how you wish to interact with those that work either for your company or by products and services from your company. The experiences you give as a brand, they make or break your business. Um, Typically, that's the design brief we get at Deloitte. Help us make our business. How either we are being disrupted or we want to disrupt. Uh, we want to have a new market to go into. We want to move away from our core offer. For example, a telco. How can I get away from just offering connectivity and play in other domains and other categories? I want to remake my business. The point we then first make is that you can bring a whole lot of tech in and innovate there, but it's pointless if you don't do it for this reason. If you do not transform with the aim to transform the user experience, we're not going anywhere. So how do you do that? 
Um, this is very challenging for a lot of companies. And as such, this is my day-to-day, -day, helping companies do exactly this. Here's a quick model for you. If you are aiming to lead a company through a disruption, whether you're creating it or being influenced by a disruption, um, it's a very holistic, it's a very encompassing effort. It's not only a tech architecture, it's an experience architecture. So what do we mean with experience architecture? Um, it's captured here in, in a high level format, but it comes down to these key words here. What do we renovate that we already have that can offer scalability and readiness for upcoming technologies? And what do we innovate to respond to upcoming technologies? It's rarely a case where you pull the plug on an entire structure and rebuild it from scratch. So a lot of roadmap planning, uh, a lot of data is needed here to keep informing if decisions that were previously made are the right ones to keep or do we need to adjust. Um, because the second line is important, the speed and capability. You need to be able to innovate at the speed of the market with a focus on your customer. Which means that the way you've made decisions previously are no longer apply. The way you go to market previously no longer applies. It's not fast enough. Uh, we work with companies that with great pride would tell us every quarter or so we're able to update our existing apps. And then you bring them case studies of leading brands that do it on a weekly basis. Um, it, was, it was mentioned by our previous speaker that making decisions faster is important. But most companies are not built to do that. They're not structured to do that. Rapid decision making is a ladder you need to climb and takes one week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. We work with finance institutions that told us the big boss is only going to sign off once a quarter. If we miss that day, it's the next quarter. Now, how do you move at speed in this market if once every quarter you get a signature? You can't do that. You need to consider your service, your business, your operational models, how you hire, how you fund, who makes the decisions and typically what we propose to tackle that problem is what we call a product-led organization model so most companies that come to us and ask for our help they sit in this environment they ideate they do some research they have some data um, now they're going to be making something, a POC, an MVP, um, and then they're going to test it, and then they're going to iterate it, and then they're going to improve it, and then they're going to deliver it. And it takes a quarter in best circumstances. Um, what we then counter-propose is, okay, you're doing some digital, but really to be digital, to become digital, to have that as an identity for your company, you need to structure and organize yourself very, very differently. And product teams, they themselves do this entire thing in a smaller group at a, at a more quicker pace because they're enabled. They are enabled because the product team exists of any and all capability needed to deliver that part of the product. That could be a core service, uh, that could be a customer service product or, or, or um, um, a foundational thing like payment transactions. That team just focuses on that, works together with visibility on what all the other teams does and collectively orchestrate the production of digital products or services with speed to the market. Um, requires that decision making is done here and here and here, not 
not on top. So again, companies are not built for this. <laughs> uh, this requires directors and CEOs to be comfortable with the fact that they're not calling the shots anymore. Hence why digital transformation for companies is so damn difficult. Product teams are ideal to deal, to, to, to tackle complexity. And I know complexity is that word where you then go like, oh yeah, those gnarly big problems. Um, the ones no one have an answer to. That's actually not what I mean here. Because companies are structured in a certain way, even doing simple things becomes super complex. Integrating three different sets of databases into one customer view for all departments can keep us busy for a good three months to sort that out for one company. And you haven't actually brought a product to bear yet. You just brought visibility. Uh, but product teams can circumnavigate that. They are user and use case driven. Um, so there needs to be a business case for them. They can deal with complexity and unknowns because they are self-contained. End-to-end -end design and development has to be present within these design groups, within these product teams. Um, and um, they need to be ready to evolve and change any roadmap that's in front of them. Why? Because, for example, if the payment, tra uh, payment transaction group is on an innovation and can do something faster, it has an influence on other parts of the product, and they need to either catch up or be ready on time before you implement the improvement. So that orchestration doesn't happen in boardrooms anymore, happens at the working level. Um, so the strength of the business case is what drives them. The autonomy of them working together and um, with passion for this product is what keeps them going and moves them forward. Often we come in and supplement team structures like that. Not every company has um, the capabilities or the headcount to do this immediately. So our market opportunity is to come, to come in and supplement some of these teams with front-end, back-end developers, data analysts, designers, researchers, et cetera. Um, but ultimately, our goal is that the companies that engage us become able in structuring these teams themselves which again is a change for a company because now they need to hire for capabilities they've never considered. They typically have outsourced to agencies or third parties. And the more parts that are involved in a system, the higher the chance of something breaking down or gaps or misalignment. So it's in a company's interest to rethink how they hire, how they train, how they coach, all that is organizational change on top of everything else. But designing brands for growth is um, anchored in your brand ambition and then applied, all these teams apply that, that known model of discover, design, deliver. How many of you are familiar with, with, those, with those Ds, the discover, design, deliver? Have you heard that before? Is you, if you haven't, you will once you dive into digital product design. It's, it's a known methodology that's anchored in design thinking. Right? Design thinking in and by itself, great technique, but won't enable full digital transformation. Why? Because it's an organizational effort. It's an organizational effort that needs to center around one thing, and that is the user the outcomes you create for your users, whether customer or employee. If you get those ducks in a, in a row, if you make that effort, you can partake in the new world of business. The new world of business being personalized, highly contextualized, highly dynamic. Agile is this. Agile is where you respond at speed of the market to being personalized, dynamic, and contextual, requiring your organization to rethink 
how they make decisions, how they inform these decisions, how they use the data for it, how they anchor it in brand value and purpose, and then deliver that with meaning, with resonance to anyone who interacts with your brand. Do that and you lead through disruption. That's what I wanted to share with you this morning.